Alrighty folks, welcome back to another episode of NBA Meets Anatomy. Here with me, we got professional ex-NBA player Morgan Phillips. Alright Morgan, what are we doing today? Guys, today in this episode we're going to be learning about Unit 9 and the senses. Perfect. Let's get right into the clips. Alright folks, the first sense we're going to be talking about today is sight. Sight's a pretty important part of the game. You, know, you can't play if you can't see. So. Alrighty, let's roll the clips. The clip we have today is going to be a clip from the NBA Euro League. His teammate going up for a layup, and he guys go for the rebound, but another player comes in and kind of screams out his tires or something. But let's just show, let's just show the clip. All right. This has been Travis Travis Price. Pleasure. In and out. Rich is called. Holy wow! Donna Eagle just clocks a kill, Mitchell. Oh, oh, no, oh, and no ref oh, saw it. Oh, oh, we need medical right now. No, and no ref saw it. The his play. eyeball has popped out of his socket. Oh, my God. That is horrific. We need. Welcome back, folks. As you can see, we're back in the studio. It got a little dark outside. Yeah, but back to that clip, uh, it was a little bit graphic, wasn't it? It was. And I see his entire eye popped out. Everything was exposed uh, all the way up until the optic nerve. It was, uh, it was a bad one. Let's just hope he's all right. Hopefully. We're already going over the topic of sight. We're going to bring out the anatomy and show you this picture of the eye. All right, guys, we're going to put it up on the screen right now. We're basically going to just show you the functions and just how it is. The first part of the eye that we'll be going over is the cornea. The cornea acts as the eye's outermost lens. The cornea functions like a window that controls and focuses the entry of light into the eye. The cornea also is responsible for contributing to 65 to 75 percent of the eye's total focusing power. The second part of the eye that we'll be going over is the iris. The iris is the circular structure responsible for controlling the diameter and size of the pupil, thus enabling the amount of light reaching the retina. Eye color is also defined by the iris. The third part of the eye that we'll be looking at is the retina. The retina is a thin layer of tissue that lines the back of the inner eye located near the optic nerve. The retina's function is to receive light focused by the lens, then convert into neural signals and send these to the brain for visual recognition. The fourth part of the eye that we'll be looking at is the optic nerve. The optic nerve's main function is to receive visual information gathered from your eye and transmit it using a series of electrical impulses to the parts of the brain in which act as visual centers, thus allowing you to make sense of what you are seeing. The fifth part of the eye that we will be looking at is the sclera. The sclera is the opaque, fibrous, tough, protective outer layer of the eye that is directly continuous with the cornea in front and has a sheath that covers the optic nerve. Overall, its main functions include protection, and maintaining shape and form. The sixth part of the eye that we'll be looking at is the aqueous humor. The aqueous humor is responsible for nourishing the cornea and the lens by supplying with nutrition such as amino acids and glucose. The aqueous humor is also responsible for maintaining intraocular pressure throughout the eye. The eighth part of the eye that we'll be looking at is the lens. The lens is responsible for changing focal distance throughout the eye. It also helps identify objects throughout various distances. The ninth and final part of the eye we'll be looking at is the vitreous humor. The vitreous humor plays a vital role in protecting the eye, and most importantly, it helps maintain its spherical shape. It also acts as the film on a camera in relation to the retina. And for an honorable mention, we have photoreceptors. Photoreceptors are the cells in the retina that respond to light. Their distinguishing feature is the presence of large amounts of tightly packed membrane that contain the photopigment rhabdozin or a related molecule. Rods are the photoreceptors responsible for vision in shades of gray, as do cones are responsible for colored vision. Moving on to our second sense, we have 
key ring. Key ring, pretty important, you know, verbal communication, you gotta be able to understand what people are saying to you. It helps a lot, you know, it makes problem solving a lot easier, you know. Overall, super important. In the NBA, hearing is pretty essential to the game. You need to be able to hear what coach has to say because it's the whole thing in this game, you know? Exactly. Yeah, and on to the next, uh, we're going to show you a clip of NBA uh, Warriors shooting guard, Clay Thompson, getting kneed right in the ear. Uh, pretty gruesome injury, so just heads up, look out, and roll a clip. Thompson draws the foul on the reason, got hit in the head, and Thompson shaking up. As the reason picks up his fifth foul. That's a tough play. Again, a hard blow to the head. You see if they go through some of the same protocol to look to make sure that Thompson doesn't have a concussion. That is a hard direct hit. Ooh. That right there, it was a nasty knee right to Clay Thompson's horrible. That was a bad one, but uh, up next, we're also gonna display a uh, picture of the ear and all it's going on that picture. It's gonna show the anatomy and the physiology of all the parts. And it's basically, we're gonna be able to get a better sense of what happened to his ear and what parts were affected. All right, so that's going up. As you can see, we have a diagram of the ear here. And in the video we watched with the injury of Clay Thompson, we could clearly tell that his oracle of the ear was damaged. Speaking of the oracle, the oracle is the outside of the ear that catches sound waves. Next up is the external acoustic medius. That is the hole in the outside of the ear to the tympanic membrane. Next up, the tympanium. The tympanium is the thing that sound waves hit to cause it to vibrate. The malleus is one of the three little bones in your ears that transmits the vibrations of the eardrum to the incus. The incus is the second tiny bone in your ear transmits the vibrations between the malleus and stapes. Stapes is the third and final bone in the ear and it transmits the vibrations from the incus. Also, it is the smallest bone in the entire body. And now we are on the cochlea. The cochlea is the circular tube that transforms sound waves into electrical impulses. The vestibule is a little space inside of your ear, and it helps sense gravity and linear acceleration. We are on to the semicircular canals now. Those are the little tubes with the liquid inside that help you with your balance and keep you right side up. The pharyngotympanic tube connects the throat and the eardrum, controls the pressure in the middle ear, making it equal with the air pressure outside the body. And last but not least, we have the vestibulocochlear nerve that transmits the signals from the ear to the brain. And while we're finishing up hearing, we can even talk about the sixth sense of the body, proprioception. Proprioception is part of the semicircular canals. It is the perception or awareness of the position and movement of the body. All right, folks, and on from our second uh, sense to our third sense, we're gonna be talking about touch. And touch is pretty simple, you know, everyone knows about it, but uh, more, can I elaborate on that a little more? Of course, Luke. So touch is pretty essential because the nerves in your hands define the way you feel. And for life, you got to pick up stuff, you got to feel, you know. In the NBA, it's also a big factor because you got to be able to touch the ball. And the game's all about shooting hoops, so. Yeah, and that goes for any sport, honestly. But uh, up next, we're going to be showing you a clip, a little bit of a fun one. Of uh, two NBA players going at it after a technical foul. All right, let's roll the clip. Hey, Carlos Delfino on the injured list with a knee bruise. Ben to the rack, lays it up, no, but we do have a whistle and a foul. Ben just went after our tent. Oh, that's not we good. got that's trouble bad. right here in the Motor City. We got big trouble here in the Motor City. That's not good for Ben. And Derek Coleman is up the bench. That's going to be a uh, suspension. Alrighty, and on to our next sense, we have taste. Or you want to tell us a little more about that? The taste sense is defined by taste buds that are on your tongue. There are five basic taste sensations. Those five are bitter, sour, sweet, salty, and umami. Sadly, for our friend Shaq, spicy is not a sense. So, we're going to take you over there. Kansas don't know how to do no hot wings. Kansas. 
Jesus. Oh, I apologize, Kansas. Holy. Oh. It's time to reach for that jug. You lied to me. You. Oh. Oh. Guess what got me? God. <laughs> All right, Shaq. Oh, uh, you fucking liar. Moving on to our last sense, we have smell. Smell, you know, despite its non-contributing factors to the game, or any sports for that matter, except for, I don't know, hot dog eating. Uh, um, I mean, it's still a fun one, because, you know, without, without the sense of smell, your taste buds would also suffer. You'd probably lose a little bit of, you know, some of that stuff. And, uh, and for our last notable mention, we have chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are basically a, a cell and or an organ which are reactive to chemical stimuli. And basically, Morgan, you wanna tell us what else is reactive to that? Basically what they are is your taste buds and your nostrils working together, making up the taste in your mouth. And the two senses that use that is your smell and taste. And that's it. Alrighty, folks, well, thanks for tuning into the show. That is all for NBA on Anatomy.